assalamu alaikum students so today we will discuss the structure and function of structure and function of blood vessels so as you know there are the blood vessels they are the part of the cardiovascular system cardiovascular system so the other part of cardiovascular system is the other part of the cardiovascular system is the heart so heart and the heart plus the blood vessels constitute the cardiovascular system which carry the oxygenated blood and the nutrients to the uh, tissues and cells and from the tissues and cells the carbon dioxide and the waste products back to the lungs and the kidneys to be excreted out so <clears throat> how many types of blood vessels are there there are three types of blood vessels number 1 are the arteries number 2 capillaries number 3 is the veins so now you can see here the arteries they arise from the left side of the heart and they carry the oxygenated blood which is shown here by the red color so the arteries they carry the blood and they become initially they are larger then they become smaller and smaller ultimately they are divided into capillaries now capillaries they unite and form the venules the small veins then the medium sized veins and the large veins and then these large veins enter into the right side of the heart through the inferior vena cava from the lower half of the body and superior vena cava through the upper half of the body so this circulation which is also known as the general circulation or systemic circulation general circulation and systemic circulation so this is the general circulation or the systemic circulation and you know for oxygenation the blood goes from the ox deoxygenated blood coming from the body through the veins goes through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava in the right atrium and from right atrium the blood goes into right ventricle and then from right ventricle it goes from the pulmonary artery to the pulmonary artery into the lungs and here the oxygenation occurs and then the blood comes back through the pulmonary veins into the left atria so this is the pulmonary circulation circulation pulmonary circulation okay so coming uh, to the back to the structures structure of the blood vessels so uh, you uh, now uh, you know that blood vessel is a pipe like structure having a empty space inside which is known as the lumen and a wall so this lumen is filled by blood so the wall of the vessels they consist of three layers number 1 is the tunica intima number 2 is the tunica media and number 3 is the tunica adventitia
Now the tunica, the tunica intima. Okay. We can draw here three lines and make a table, and then we can differentiate the tunica intima. Tunica media and Tunica Adventitia. So Tunica media, it consists of the epithelium. You know, all the hollow structures of the body, they are lined by epithelium. So on the luminal side, there is epithelium lining epithelium so this epithelium is the simple squamous epithelium simple squamous epithelium this epithelium is the simple squamous epithelium which is also known as the other name of this epithelium in the blood vessels is the endothelium So the second component is the connective tissue, which is also known as the subendothelial. Connective tissue. So tunica media of the blood vessels, they contain two components. That is the smooth muscles. Plus elastic fibers. So we will discuss later on what, is, what are the function of these two components? Tunica adventitia consists of the connective tissue, loose connective tissue. Okay. Now the types of, okay, one by one, we will take the arteries, the structure of arteries, the structure of capillaries and the structure of veins. <coughs> so <clears throat> the types of arteries. So how many arteries are there? Types of arteries. Number one is the large arteries. Number two is the medium size arteries. Number three is the uh, then the smaller arteries and then the arterioles. So larger arteries, uh, the, the artery arising directly from the heart is the large artery. So intima is the same, tunica intima is the same. In media, in tunica media, more elastic fibers. Why more elastic fibers in the large arteries? Because they have to sustain the pressure coming of the blood coming from gushing out of the heart. So these are also known as the elastic arteries. So they are also known as elastic arteries. Okay, then the medium size arteries. Now these medium size, uh, so exa uh, example of the elastic artery is the aorta and its branches. Aorta and its branches. So the branches arising from the aorta directly. So these are the examples of large arteries or elastic arteries. Then coming to the medium size arteries, medium size arteries, same tunica intima, media is different, having more smooth muscles. Why more smooth muscles? Because they have to uh, propagate the pressure, maintain and propagate the pressure of the uh, blood to more distant areas. Now, the third part is the arterioles now these are very small artery small uh, vessels 
and they have got that unica media have got two to three layers of smooth muscles no elastic fibers so the example of medium size arteries are the radial artery or the brachial artery ulnar artery femoral artery so arterioles have got two to three layers of smooth muscles and no elastic fibers so this two to three layers of muscles when contract they 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 compress the lumen to the extent that it affects the flow of blood so it these vessels they offer resistance to the flow of blood thus maintaining the blood pressure maintaining the bp blood pressure so these are also known as resistance vessels resistance vessels <laughs> now again you can here see the structure of arterial ball this is the intima tunica intima so lined by epithelium the simple squamous epithelium why simple squamous epithelium because there is an there there is an exchange of gases occurring due to due uh, through the process of diffusion so we need very thin uh, space from where the uh, gases are exchanging so the tunica intima consists of the endothelium and sub endothelial uh, connective tissue then the uh, next layer is the layer of uh, media with smooth muscles and elastic fibers and then the tunica adventitia or external layer which consists of loose connective tissues so the various size various arteries the elastic artery the large artery the muscular the medium size artery and the arteriole so you can well appreciate the structure here uh, more elastic fibers are there in the media more smooth muscles are there in the media and in arteriole the smooth muscles are very reduced and uh, um, uh, their lumen can be occluded by the contraction of these smooth muscles okay so here you can see the arterioles the structure of arterioles so you can well observe the smooth muscles here okay so if you observe an artery or a vein uh here you can see the lumen of the artery is small lumen is small as compared to the lumen of the vein the lumen of the vein is larger while the lumen of the artery is smaller but its wall is thicker the wall of vein is thin okay then the next topic the arterial anastomosis arterial anastomosis now what is an arterial anastomosis uh now suppose there is an uh, there is a city in which a road is going here you can see uh, this road is going to a city this is a road and this is a city where you live suppose this road is blocked or it's broken down so the traffic cannot pass from it so the supplies to that city is finished so there is no supply of the petrol no supply of the goods no supply of the vegetables or fruits or 
meat or anything to the city. Likewise, an area which is an area of body, certain areas of body, they are supplied by an, an artery, single artery, and occlusion of which, occlusion of this artery due to any reason, it stops the blood supply to that area, resulting in death or necrosis of that area. So this artery, this single artery, which is supplying a certain specific region of the body, it is known as the end artery. This is known as the end artery. Now, what is arterial anastomosis? The same area, the same vessel supplying the artery uh, region. Now, another vessel, another vessel supply the region. And there is a connection between the two. So what happens when the blood flow from this area, uh, so there is an occlusion here. So blood flow, blood flows from here to, from this vessel, it goes from this channel to the, to this channel and supplies this area. So the, the blood supply is not occluded. So this is known as the arterial anastomosis. So arterial anastomosis is present in various parts of the body. Uh, now here you can see this is the hand and this is the foot. So the, the arteries of the uh, forearm and the leg, they anastomose in the um, hand and foot forming the arches. So here the palmar arches and the tarsal arches. So these arches, they, they, are supply, they, they are the anastomosis, arterial anastomosis. So if blood is occluded from the radial artery, the blood can come from the ulnar artery and supply the digits. So second example of the arterial anastomosis is the, these, uh, the anastomosis around the joints, arterial anastomosis around the joints. So why there is an anastomosis around the joint? Because uh, when you move the joint, uh, the art arteries, they become occluded. So that's why here, here the nature has provided the anastomosis so that the blood cannot be stopped to the distal parts of the body during the movement. Now, this is the much known and the much studied and the researched anastomosis that is around the heart uh, in the uh, vessels of the heart and uh, coronary arteries of the heart. Uh, now this anastomosis is a potential anastomosis. What is it? It is a potential anastomosis, potential anastomosis. This opens up slowly, with time, with passage of time, not immediately. As you know, there are certain, the, there are uh, the young people, they die of the uh, heart attack, but in older persons who have got frequent uh, complaints of angina and heart attack, they survive. This is because their potential anastomosis is opened up and the potential anastomosis in the young people have not opened up yet. So this anastomosis is known as circle of villus, which is present in the brain. The larger vessels of the brain, that is the basilar artery formed by the two vertebral arteries and the internal carotid arteries, they form an anastomosis. This is known as the circle of villus. So the branches of the 
this circle of villus, they do not anastomose. So, so if blockage occurs here in the circle, the blood can be flow, can it can flow from the other side. But if the branches are occluded, this results in stroke. Okay, then the capillaries. So what are capillaries? <clears throat> So what are capillaries? Capillaries are the vessels, smaller vessels, uh, which are present in the tissues or the organs. And they are the, arterioles, they break up into smaller vessels and the wall of the capillaries only consists of, now they have got only tunica intima, which only consists of intima, which only consists of the epithelium with its basement membrane. Epithelium with its basement membrane plus the basement membrane. Membrane. So the structure of the capillaries are the epithelium only with its basement membrane. So capillaries form link between the smallest arterioles to smallest venules. Here you can see smallest arterioles to smallest venules. It forms link and their diameter is about seven micrometer. Capillary bed is the site of exchange of substance. So these capillaries are also known as the exchange vessels exchange vessels. Uh, now the entry to the capillary bed is guarded by rings of smooth muscles, which are known as the pre-capillary sphincters. So these pre-capillary sphincters are present on the arterioles and they guard the um, entry of the blood into the capillary bed. So these are known as the vascular shunts. Uh, in winter season, you can well appreciate that our fingertips are cold. This is because the blood is shunned to the, directly to the venues. They do not enter the capillary bed so that the heat of the body is not lost. Now, there are three types of capillaries. Continuous capillaries. Continuous capillaries, fenestrated capillaries, and sinusoidal capillaries. So what are the difference between the two? Sorry for the interruption. So now you can well observe here the three types of the uh, capillaries, uh, the continuous capillaries, these are the continuous capillaries. Now continuous capillaries contain the 
simple squamous epithelial cells. There is no gap between the simple squamous epithelial cells. Actually, the cells, they, they form junctions, tight junctions. And the basement membrane, so we will form it with another color. So the basement membrane, this is the basement membrane. So the basement membrane is also complete and the cells, they unite with each other forming the junctions. So these are the continuous capillaries. So these types of capillaries are present in the lungs and the brain, heart, where the exchange of gases occurs. The fenestrated capillaries. Now you can see the basement membrane is complete of the fenestrated capillaries, but the cells, they are also having, they are, they are also having no gap between them, but there are pores in the cells. So you can, cell membrane. So you can well appreciate here, the pores, the small pores, through which uh, smaller molecular weight molecules, they pass. So these are present in the kidneys. Now the third type, the sinusoidal capillary, their diameter is large and their, <clears throat> their diameter is large and their basement membrane is incomplete. There are large gaps, also the cells they are having large gaps between them. Now, can you tell me the uh, the bone marrow cells, the blood is uh, blood cells they are produced in bone marrow, which is present in the bones. So, how these bone uh, the blood cells they enter the general circulation? Of course, this is through the sinusoidal capillaries, which large gaps in between. So, they enter this general circulation here. So the sinusoidal capillaries are present in the bone and the liver, where exchange of larger molecules occur across the tissue and the blood. So now the veins. The veins, The veins, they are the uh, veins are the blood vessels that return blood at low pressure to the heart. So the pressure is low in the veins. Walls are thinner as compared to the arteries. Now you can well appreciate here. And uh, there is the, it consists of same three layers, but they have less muscle and elastic tissue in the tunica media and more tissue in the tunica adventitia. Now the tunica adventitia is more. So less smooth muscles and less elastic fibers in the media. While adventitia in tunica adventitia the connective tissue is more as compared to the arteries. So this large amount of uh, tunica adventitia provides dead space for expansion of the veins. So as you can see, the lumen is big. There is more blood in the uh, veins as compared to the arteries at any given time. So the bleeding of, uh, now the bleeding from the, how will you differentiate that it is an arterial blood or uh, venous blood coming out? Uh, the arterial blood will, uh, if the artery is cut, the blood spurts out. But if the vein is cut, the vein is collapsed, the lumen of the vein is collapsed and it uh, comes out, it, it is not spurting, it's coming freely. <clears throat> Now, what happens in our uh, veins of the, now the, the blood 
the blood is in the uh, is at the low pressure in the veins i have told you before bloods are at low pressure blood is at low pressure in the veins so how come the uh, vein, venous blood from the uh, lower limb limbs the lower limb especially it come it goes towards the heart <coughs> so these vessels contain valves so so the veins contain the valves which um, convey the uh, column of the uh, blood towards the heart now the veins are absent in the veins of the uh, these valves are absent in the veins of thorax and abdomen and they assist in maintaining one way flow of the blood now these veins are dispensable um, distensible these are vessels as i have told you and they have the capacity to hold large proportions of body blood at any one time two thirds of portions of blood in the body is in the veins so if there is any loss of blood from the arteries the the vascular system absorb the blood from the veins now the last part the vasa visorum vessel of the vessel so this is a latin word which means vessels of the vessels so how do the blood uh, tissue of the uh, blood vessels they take their new uh, oxygen and nutrients so the smaller blood vessels they take their nutrition and the uh, gases from directly from the blood but the larger vessels they have large structure so they need their own blood vessels the arteries and the veins smaller blood vessels so these are all these are known as the vasa visorum so now i hope you have understood the topic of the uh, structure of the uh, blood vessel and also their function functions thank you so much allah hafiz